What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well since the last video. I had to take a little break for personal affairs. I was traveling. I really didn't have any time to make a video, but now I'm back and today we're going to be doing a film tutorial video for you guys. Get pumped because it's going to be educational. So basically I'm going to take you through the entire process and all the steps and make it as easy as possible for you guys so that if you're watching this at home or if you're attempting to do the same thing that you can follow along and not get lost in between each of the steps. With that being said, let's not waste any more time and go ahead and jump right into it. So the next thing that you want to do after you get all your equipment gathered up and your area is ready to go, you want to measure out your chemicals and store them in the proper containers. So here I have two measuring cups, one in 250 milliliter, one in 1000 milliliter, also one liter for larger measurements. I also have one beaker that measures at fine increments of one milliliter and I would highly recommend getting three pickling jars to store your chemicals in the ones that seal at the top so that they're not exposed to air so after you get all your chemicals measured out and stored in the right containers you're gonna have to make sure that they're at the right temperature I recommend for colder temperatures you take a bowl fill it with ice and dunk the tank right in there and for warmer temperatures, I recommend filling up the tub with hot water and letting them sit in there. You will also need a thermometer for this, guys. Make sure that you have one. Otherwise, you're going to be like... Now we're going to move on to the next step, which is getting the film out of the film roll and into the development tank using the dark bag. For this, you're going to need a few items, which is a pair of scissors a bottle cap opener, gloves, a development tank. You can find these on Amazon and I will post links in the description below for you guys so you can buy one if you need one. A dark bag. You guys can also find this on Amazon. And obviously you will need a roll of film that you fully shot. I hope you had that before we started this video. So guys, this is the next step. This is probably my least favorite step just because of how tedious it is to get the actual film onto the spool itself. But that being said, it's actually not that bad. I've been able to do it just fine in the past. It's just a little tricky at first. Um, the first thing would be to get this roll of film and pop it open with the bottle opener. You're gonna wanna do this from the top end You'll, you'll be able to fill it because it has a little knob on the top and you just pop it off in the dark bag. You pull the film out and it's going to have a little rounded edge. You have to cut it at the first notch after that rounded edge and make sure that it's straight so that it goes onto the spool smoothly. Otherwise, it's going to get stuck and start crunching on the spool and it's going to be a total headache. It's happened to me multiple times before. So yeah, that's the hardest part I would say. Once you get it on and it goes all the way, all you have to do is take these pair of scissors and cut off the end. And then basically you put the spool on this little shaft. You put this whole thing in the bottom of your tank. You put the cap on and you lock it and then you can take it out of the dark bag. And that's it, guys. It's really not that hard. You don't have to like freak out because I'm saying it's tricky. It just takes some time to get used to. That's all. Without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now in the dark bag and show you guys.
one eternity later. There you go. So guys, that's how I got the film canister and the development tank. Now we're at the next step where we're actually going to do developing. One tip before I start is that make sure you have your instructions with you. These are my beat up Unicolor C41 processing kit instructions. And on the first step you can see the temperature. It says 102 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what I have my water here set to right now. It just dropped, but it was at 102 a second ago. I'm gonna do a pre-soak, then the developer, then the fixer, and then I'm going to do a wash, and then the stabilizer mixed with photo flow, and then a final wash, and then a dry. All right, also I forgot to mention before we start, make sure that you have a timer. I have my timer here on my iPhone. I'm pretty sure every single person has a timer on their phone these days. But if you don't, get a timer because you will need it. All right, let's get started. So there you have it. We got through all the other steps. We're at the last step. All you have to do is hang this guy to dry and make sure that you have it ready for scanning. So when your film is developed, fully developed, you do not want to touch it at all with your nasty fingers because you're going to get oil prints. You're going to damage the film. It is at its most vulnerable state when it just has been developed. You have to wait till it dries, and even then, you can't be touching it with your bare hands. Make sure you hold the end that has like the little tab on it, where there's no photos, or the other end where you cut it at the beginning. Um, but yeah, or just wear gloves. So there are numerous ways to dry film. There are machines that do it for you. There are fixtures that you can attach to your ceilings, such as in a dark room, and just clip it on. I personally don't have any of those things. I looked for the cheapest alternative using my intuitive brain, and I went to Target and got these little binder rings with these little bag clips. 
things. A pro tip for you guys would be to pin on something at the bottom as well to add a little bit of weight so that your film won't uh, curl up when it's drying because if it does, it actually makes it harder to scan correctly once you get to that step if it's all curled and bent. So here I go. It's all coming out. Look at that. So I just clip it on. Just like that. See? And now you just open this. Clip it on the showering and there you go. So usually I just kind of snap the film, take it from the bottom and snap it. So what this does is kind of just uh, snaps the water beads and just like lets them bounce off. So I do that a few times and then I just leave it. So I'll come back to you when this is fully dry. It takes about two to three hours. I'm usually impatient. I take about two hours and it's fully dry, but you guys probably should wait to three hours if it's your first time just to make sure. Um, I don't want you guys to ruin your film by taking it out prematurely. So I'll get back to you guys when this is done. I'll show you my process, how I get it ready for scanning and what machine I use and then we'll be all set. Alright guys, I'm here with the fully dried film roll. It's been hanging here for about three hours now, so I'm about to take it down and head into the next room so I can prep it for scanning. I'll meet you guys there. Alright guys, here I am in the next room with my full film roll. I'm cutting it into strips of five frames each. The reason why I chose five frames is because I have some archival sheets that I use to store these strips after, and it fits exactly five frames. Another pro tip for you guys here, get yourself a dust blower. This has helped me tremendously because it helps remove dust and debris and any microfibers from your film without you having to actually touch it. This is a great tool to have right before you start scanning. Um, and it comes in any of the camera cleaning kits you can find in Best Buy or wherever they sell cameras really. So here I have the strips prepped, ready to get scanned. Um, I have an Epson V550 that I'm using here, so I have the actual program for it on my computer. I do a preview scan and rotate my photos to the right orientation, make sure that nothing's wrong with them, and then I'm going to go ahead with the actual scan. Alright guys, so that concludes our second vlog entry. I hope you found this video useful. If you didn't for any reason, please drop a comment below. I'll try to answer back to you or incorporate it into a new video. Um, if you have any suggestions for future videos, please drop a comment as well. Again, all the links for all the equipment that I have and a basic guideline will be in the description below if you want to check that out. So yeah, with all that being said, thanks again for watching everyone and I hope you enjoy the rest of this video.